Hi, everyone. Welcome to Riot's Lunch and Learn series. You found us, the place where we feature all of Riot's partners. I am super excited to have two Marks here with us today with Nichikan. But before we get started, um, I will let Ed Bray with AEM Group introduce them. And I just have a couple of quick reminders before I hand it over to Ed. The first is that this session is being recorded. It will be posted to Riot's YouTube channel and then shared out to the meetup groups where you registered for this event. If you have any questions throughout the presentation, please do put them in the chat box. We're gonna make this an interactive presentation today. So um, questions will be answered in real time, which is gonna be a lot of fun. And then um, the third just reminder is to please keep yourself muted throughout the event um, and utilize that chat box. There will be an opportunity at the end if you want to unmute and ask questions, but during the presentation, please do keep yourself muted. But without further ado, I will hand it over to our partners at AM Group, Ed Bray. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you, Caroline. And uh, thank you guys for joining us. Um, I'm the technical sales and applications engineer with AEM Group uh, here in Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, I want to introduce uh, two Marks. Mark Fisk, Director of Marketing for Nichicon uh, Capacitors, as well as Mark Gebbia, uh, Dr. Capacitor, he's going to be presenting. Uh, he is the sales and applications engineering manager at Nichicon, um, and he's going to be talking about powering the edge, uh, Nichicon's battery technology. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mark Gebbia, Dr. Capacitor. Well, Ed, that, that was really a, one of the best introductions that I have never had, because this is Mark Fisk who's going to kick us off. Oh, I'm sorry, Mark. To, uh, <laughs> I wasn't no, sure. That was, <laughs> we appreciate it. I do appreciate your introduction and thank you. We have a uh, uh, we have a great presentation, a new technology. We want to talk to you about it, especially how it applies to the edge. But before we do that, I want to go into some things that are probably very obvious to you, but forgive me. As you know. Edge devices collect data through various types of sensors, data collection tools. Uh, they transmit the data between the lo local network and the cloud, and they're able to translate those protocols used by the local devices into protocols used by the cloud. We're focusing on the edge so that we can, uh, because we want to be able to help power that those devices out there and and harvest the energy for them, from them. So typically the way the system set up now, it collects data out there, sends it to some sort of data storage, and then it may go to the cloud for uh, big data analysis. IoT applications in the home, hopefully you all know this, but there's hundreds of them growing every day. Mark Jebbia, will explain more about some of these as we move through it. One of the areas that we're seeing growth is in uh, disaster prevention. Uh, in the home, you have the um, water level. So you're in the, here we have a lot of sump pumps in our basements. So we have, we're checking for water. If there's extra water, then there is a vibration out on the West Coast and other places, things like that. Smart buildings, uh, IIoT, great applications there, especially uh, for lighting in a room and other examples. Agriculture, uh, helping the farmer utilize the best application of their resources going forward. The IoT applications methodologies, this is sort of a recap just places where the SLB is used, the Nichicon battery cap, and how it's used. It powers the edge. It has, acts as a battery uh, backup power supply, main power supply, and others. Uh, now what is the state of the uh, IoT? By 2020, the automotive and enterprise gadgets uh, online were about 5.8 billion. In uh, by 2025, we expect it is. Just, I'm sorry, forgive me. It is expected that 
there will be 3.9 to 41 billion devices online by 2025. Um, the uh, smart speaker growth by the end of this year is expected to be up 20, uh, 55%. And uh, it's interesting that I think this was uh, Amazon posted, uh, had a note that it was 127 devices that connect to the internet every second. So to make it a little bit more realistic to me or you, that's 450,000 just during this presentation will be added. Uh, 3 billion in the next month and four trillion in the next year. And the big, one of the big growth industries is the smart home security uh, with the development of places and uh, things like Ring and uh, Simply Safe, et cetera. Other areas that we're seeing growth, the economic value by 2025 is expected to be four to $11 trillion. And uh, the projection for IOT by the end of last year was 124 billion. So that data is a little bit old. But how do we currently edge power the uh, edge? Um, well, currently coin cells are typically one of the biggest users, the CR2032, which edge gives you about 40 hours of life. Another area is the EDLC or supercapacitor. What are the issues with these devices? Maintenance, upkeep, uh, just having to get in and do it. The lack of power or long-term energy and their rapidly expanding use. <clears throat> so how do we, we have a solution to fix all of this. It's known as the small lithium rechargeable battery, otherwise known as the SLB series from Michicon. And uh, just to let you know, that I will be jumping onto the chat now and answering questions or just talking and Mark will take over. And then if there's a question that comes up that we really want to discuss, I'll interrupt Mark. So take it away, Doc. Thank you, Mark. So before, before I talk a little bit about the SOB, I'm just going to briefly go over the types of energy storage devices in the electronics today. As, as Mark alluded to, there are two types of devices, supercapacitors or EDLCs and lithium ion batteries. Now, each have advantages such as EDLCs, you know, they can give you a lot of power, but in short bursts. So there's kind of a need for longer discharge times at the higher power level. Then there's the lithium ion batteries, which deliver lower levels of power or energy but for longer periods of time. So they have a need, there's a need for larger amounts of energy to be uh, given out. So there's a big gap in the middle. And up until now, there's nothing that's been able to bridge that gap, but the SLB does. I'll give a brief comparison of the SLB to an EDLC and a, you know, a typical lithium ion battery. Now, the SLB has advantages over both. For example, the F, comparing it to an EDLC, the SLB has a slightly higher voltage rating. It has a higher energy density. So it can store more energy compared to an EDLC. It's about six times higher. And what about against a typical lithium ion battery? Well, it's three times the power density. So, uh, so in order they can discharge its energy quicker than a uh, typical lithium ion battery. It has actually a little bit better temperature range. And a key difference is cycle life. That's how many times it can be charged and discharged. The SLB can be discharged and charged uh, about 25,000 times. And that's about eight times better than a lithium ion battery. And a little, a nice safety advantage is in the event of a short, it won't rupture or burn. So I thought I'd talk a little bit about EDLCs and lithium ion batteries, you know, like how they're made a little bit, showing you the differences between the two. First, we'll start with the EDLC. Now, the electrodes in the EDLCs or supercapacitors is made of carbon instead of metal. 
carbon is used because we need to have a large surface area because granule of carbon, if you were to look at it, you have to envision it as a, like a golf ball with all those little dimples, but those dimples go deeply into the granule. So that creates a lot of surface area, and for capacitors, surface area correlates directly to the capacity of the device. But unlike regular capacitors, EDLCs do not store the energy in a dielectric. They actually store it on the interface of the carbon and electrolyte. Since there are two electrodes in the capacitor, that's two layers, hence the name double layer. And with Nichicon, we use an environmentally safe electrolyte where others do not necessarily use that. A little about the EDLCs from Nichicon is we do values up to 2,500 farads in a single package. We have a voltages going as high as 2.7 volts. And we have a maximum temperature rating of about 85 degrees C. Main advantage with EDLCs is the number of charge and discharge cycles. They can be up to a million times and still retain like 80%, 70% of their charging capabilities. So they have a lot of uses as a battery backup or an alternative mm -hmm. to battery. They use the solar power, the wind power, the couple of examples. Very briefly, uh, EDLCs are carbon-based technology to use with or as an alternative to batteries. Uh, and the key advantage is that they can be charged and discharged very quickly and in a lot of time. And in Michigan, our capacitance range is 1 farad to 2,500 farad. The overall voltage range is 2.5 to 2.7 volts. What about lithium ion batteries? First of all, why do we use lithium? Well, it's actually the lightest metal in the periodic table, so it keeps the part lightweight. They have a high electrochemical potential, and what I mean by that is how easily ions and electrons can move within the material. Large specific energy just means the capability of it storing energy. The higher the number, the more energy it can store. Thermally stable uh, compared to other metals. And it, it, it's high reliability. What I mean by that is it doesn't short easily. It has extra long cycle life, which that's the number of charge discharge cycles it can ha handle. And with our SLB, we can do it at a higher, higher charging and discharging rate. Uh, we can do up to 20C. Uh, you know, 20C is the number of charges, not temperature. So like the SLB can be used at 20 times its rating. And I'll, I'll show you a little bit more of that shortly. So how does the battery work? Well, very simply, if you're charging or discharging it, the ions Inside the battery move. They go from positive to negative, negative to positive, depending on if you're charging or discharging. As the ions move, the electrons need to move too. The electrons move externally. There's where your current comes from. For those of you who are into chemistry, this is the mathematical formula for that uh, how a battery works. So how about a side-by-side -side comparison of a supercapacitor versus a typical lithium ion battery? So what are the advantages of each compared to the other? As I already mentioned, supercaps can be charged and discharged repeatedly thousands and thousands of times. They're actually a little bit more stable with temperature, and they have the higher power density. And they can be charged and discharged very, very quickly. They do have a little bit wider temperature range. And in Nichicon, 
Our parts are environmentally safe. They're also non-flammable. And EDLCs, because they're manufactured in aluminum electrolytic case styles, they're circuit board mountable. What about batteries? Well, they have the higher energy density, so they can store a lot more energy. And they're able to discharge that energy over long periods of time. They're actually smaller than an EDLC. And they're actually lower cost. In many cases, they have a little bit better voltage rating. Now, there are the key characteristics uh, between EDLCs and the SOB battery that should be noted, and that's when they discharge. When an EDLC begins to discharge, the voltage across it starts to drop immediately. Now, with the battery, though, you go to discharge it, the voltage will drop just a little bit, but stay relatively constant until the energy is used up, then it falls off. That's a big advantage when you're looking at edge devices. So now I'm going to get into a little bit more about our SLV battery. First off, what makes it a little different there is the negative electrode. Typical lithium ion batteries use carbon. We're actually using lithium titanate. And one of the key advantages of that is in the event of an internal short, the SLB only generates a small current within it, where a typical lithium ion battery uh, basically generates a very large current and you get the nice light show that usually follows it. And a, a key characteristic is called lithium metal deposition. Now, I'm actually going to explain that in a, in a moment. I have an illustration that will make it a lot easier to follow than me just explaining it verbally. So what is the big difference of that negative electrode? What did it gain us? Well, first, let's look at the lithium ion battery. You know, they use a graphite, you know, basically carbon. Key characteristics of that are these here. Uh, the lithium ion reaction voltage. All that means is inside the battery, once the battery voltage hits 0.1 volts, the lithium ions begin to start moving. Because they move at such a low voltage, they consume the electrolyte. That in turn causes internal resistance of the battery to increase because an item called the SEI, solid electrolyte interface, uh, begins to grow. That's actually a negative characteristic. So by switching to the lithium titanate that we did, we changed that reaction voltage to 1.55 volts. You need to go to a much higher voltage before the lithium ions begin to start moving around. That results in a lower electrolyte uh, usage. The, the resistance of the battery is very low, and that's important uh, for charging characteristics, which I will show you shortly. And that SCI layer remains very thin. You want that SCI to be thin because of that lithium deposition I just talked about a moment ago. What happens is, as these ions move back and forth, over time, they begin to accumulate on the negative electrode. So they start creating like uh, fingers or spikes. And eventually, they can actually penetrate the paper separate us inside the battery. You've now got an arc path, and it's been short out. By, by using the titanate and having it to go to a much higher voltage, you don't get that buildup. So the part doesn't short out. So some other advantages of switching to that material was it's thermally stable, so it doesn't easily burn. And it doesn't react much with the electrolyte, which cause, keeps the battery from heating up. So it keeps it, lets it run cool. And again, if in the event of a short, only a small current is generated. Overall, 
the SLB is safer and more reliable. Let me talk about the actual series itself, some of the characteristics and specifications of it. Uh, first off, there's a little uh, IoT board. You can see the board itself is very small. It's a little bigger than a dime, and the battery is even smaller than that. So here's the uh, specification. The SLB is rated from 2.8 volts and has a cutoff voltage of 1.8 volts. You may also know this as depth of discharge voltage. And the product line consists of five values ranging from 0.35 milliamp hours up to 150 milliamp hours. A major difference between that and the typical lithium ion batteries is how it's encased. The SLB is made in electrolytic case style, uh, as opposed to the coin cells uh, that Mark pointed out earlier. So our part is now circuit board mountable without special fixture. Now the SLB can also be used not just as an alternative to regular lithium ion batteries, but to EDLC. And you can use the conversion rate of one milliamp hour equals 10 farad. I compare how efficient a SLB battery is compared to EDLC. I've got this chart here for you. And what I'm using in this chart is uh, Nichicon product lines. If we were to use competitors' product lines, the efficiencies could even be higher. So comparing uh, using the uh, 10 to 1 ratio, a 0.35 milliamp hour part, you'd have to use a 3.5 farad. Standard value is 3.3. Close enough for this, you know, this demonstration. The SLB is only 15.5% the volume of the EDLC of the same value, equivalent storage capability. So we'll go to a higher value. We'll go to the 14 milliamp hour part. Its case size is only 5% that of an EDLC. All right, that EDLC is a snap-in style capacitor, if you're familiar with them, where the SLB is the standard lead wire part. Our largest value, which is 150 milliamp hour part, closest value we can compare it to is 1300 farad, and that's a 40 by 135 case size. That's actually a screw terminal part, so it's not even board mountable. Our part's only 9% the volume. Mm -hmm. So the SLB has a much greater volume efficiency, uh, so you should be able to save a lot of board space that way. Another way of looking at them is comparing them by case size. So we'll take the smallest case size, that was our 3 by 7 uh, 0.35 milliamp hour apart. Well, EDLCs don't even come that small, or there is no comparison. Taking the uh, 8 by 11 and a half, the sec uh, which I just showed you in the previous slide, the largest value we supply is 1.5 farads in that case size. So you need 94 of them to match the storage capability of our SLB battery. Then for the 12 and a half by 40, which is the largest case size we're doing, you need uh, 1,500 farad, and the largest value we do in that 12 and a half by 40 is only 22 farad. You need 69 of them to get the storage capability of the one SLB. Again, showing that the SLB is much higher energy density compared to an EDLC. Let's get into the characteristics of the part. Well, the charge discharge cycle is usually one of the biggies. Compared to a typical lithium ion battery, our part can go 25,000 cycles, still retain 80% of its storage capability, where typical lithium ion barely made 1,500. The charge-discharge characteristics. 
As I mentioned earlier, the SLB can be used up to 20 times its rating. So the 0.35 milliamp hour part, for example, could be used up to 7 milliamps. The time is only at for three minutes. And then you can use in 20C is the highest uh, rating I have seen in the battery so far. Now, the charging and discharging characteristics are virtually symmetrical. So it can be charged or discharged at those rates and keep operational. So another uh, advantage is because of the low internal resistance of the battery that I mentioned earlier, it allows the battery to also be charged at very low current, which is a key advantage in the uh, edge devices. For example, here we're going at 0.014C. So to this, this illustration, it took 84 hours for the battery to charge. You couldn't do that with an EDLC or a typical lithium ion battery. Mark? Yes. I, I, I just on the notes, yes. we had a couple of questions and I wanted to get to it. There's one I'm going to save for the end, okay. but <clears throat> I wanted to confirm. Uh, Mike has asked Does the LTA, uh, LTO form the fingers on the anode and cathode, which develop or build uh, with charging, eventually cause failure? And my answer was is that no, no, that's one of the advantages of the SLB. Yeah. It does not do that. So yeah. I was correct on that one. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the fingers aren't because of the carbon okay. electrodes, not okay. the LTO. All right. So it's because of the carbon on the uh, on the fingers yeah. or the I think he calls them dendrites. Yeah. Uh, so they also uh, do they also not deform with charging? Uh, think that the uh, or is the structure change in lithium ion in a? Uh, sure, I follow the question, Larry. Okay. And, and, <clears throat> hey, Mike. Yeah. We'll we'll uh, at the end of this we'll go into that. I I don't like I said I think I uh, yeah we'll, we'll come back to your question on the deforming in a moment at the end. So but so go ahead, Mark. I'm okay. sorry to interrupt you. No, that's fine. All right. So. How does the SLB behave with temperature? Well, for those of us in the Midwest and North, you know, the winter comes, our car batteries don't like the cold. Well, the SLB is no different. It doesn't really like the cold either. It loses almost 40, or sorry, 50% of its storage capability when the temperature drops. <coughs> but the key advantage is when it drops like that, it still doesn't short easily. For example, here with the charging of the part, even at minus 30, it retains 52% of its storage capability of what it would have at room temperature. <clears throat> Discharge, very similar, it retains 46%. So when I said it just about 50, here's some uh, proof of that. Well, well, what about the other way? What if it gets hot? Well, at 60 degrees C, its characteristics are virtually identical to room temperature. It's hard to see, but all three of those lines are virtually overlapping each other, so it has almost no effect on the part. Well, what if something happens and you exceed the cutoff voltage? Now something something goes wrong somewhere along the way. Well, we discharge the SLB all the way down to zero volt. It'll still work. We did it 1,800 times, and we still retained over 70% of its capability. So it can take an abuse. Not recommending you do it, but if it ha if it should happen, you can be assured it'll keep working. So we also looked at it, well, what if the other way happens? You overcharge it. Is it going to blow up? Is it going to short out? Well, not really. It retains 90% of its storage capability. Uh, so if something should happen accidentally and you overcharge it, and the part's going to hold up, of course, we recommend you don't overcharge it, but in the event it should happen, you have some confidence you won't have the part blow up on you. 
Hey, Mark, we have another yeah. question before you yeah. get into this one. It might fit in with this a little bit. What's sure. the difference between the NicheCon SLB and other brands of SLBs? There aren't any other other brands of SLB. <laughs> That's the key. That's the that is the, that case that like I pointed out the SLB came in. We're like the only ones that do it. <clears throat> we know there are people out there who have a similar one uh, that are leaded, but they don't have the charge capability. Ours was rated at 20C. Uh, the ones that we've seen out there are only at, uh, max out at 10. Uh, most there nobody has a board mounted one other than that. And that we're aware of, and uh, the technology that's the LTO inside that is a specific one that Nichicon has uh, got licensed from uh, Toshiba. So it is a very unique product that only Nichicon has. There are other wannabes, but nobody. No. Anyway, that's marketing. Forget it. We're on, <laughs> we're not doing that. Okay, Mark, please continue. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, the SLB is a battery, so how well does it retain the charge if the charging source should be removed? Well, if we look at the uh, 25 degree temperature ratings here for the EDLC and the SLB, now the EDLC lost 27% of its energy after 30 days, where the SLB only lost five after 40 days. So it does rehold, it will hold its charge. What happens if you decide to physically abuse the part? Well, we've actually run these tests on the part, and none of them ruptured or ignited when we did these things to the part. So it's a very, very safe product compared to a typical lithium ion batteries. All right, so let's get into some applications. <coughs> so, uh, home devices, you know, let's see, you know, a typical home now has a bunch of systems that were at one time not connected to each other, and now through IoT and all, they're connected. You know, things like uh, the security systems, you know, this is a huge growth area, you know, in companies like Ring, Simply Safe, you know, ADT, you know, Vivint are supplying all kinds of edge devices for these. But don't forget, these systems still need to have a router or central, you know, device like the Google Home, Alexa, you know, and those need backup power. And there's other applications like energy management, you know, especially with the growing uh, use of EVs, you know, power management for vehicle to home applications is going to be a big growth area. <clears throat> then there's going to be so odd places too, like. In the bathroom, you've got uh, digital shower interfaces, which will control your temperature and water pressure. You do all that uh, remotely. But in this room, you can see a lot of these devices, again, weren't connected years ago, and now they are. And this is just a sampling of some of the devices. Now, I'm not even showing like uh, smart speakers which is another big <clears throat> growth area. But what about the SLB itself? Well, it started off with the Galaxy Note 10. This is uh, the first big application of the SLB. And it was so effective that they're going to use it now on the Galaxy Note 20 and 20 Ultra and that's simply because the SLB increased the functionality and the usage time compared to what they used before in the S Pen. So now you can get up to 10 hours of usage out of the S Pen because of the bar SLB. So they're curious, this is the actual uh, S Pen, and the SLB is uh, there on the right. And to give you how small it is, this picture is a blow up of about 100 times what the actual size of the part is. So Rico uh, looked into using our part. They wanted to make a uh, IoT Edge device that is uh, maintenance-free. 
And this is that little board I showed you earlier that they came up with. The way this works is that solar panel charges the SLB. The SLB powers that circuit board. The circuit board is measuring a temperature, humidity, you know, atmospheric pressure, the illumination in the room. You know, and it transmits that data through the uh, Bluetooth that's on there to either a tablet or a phone. And you can get this, these, these readouts. <coughs> and Rico liked the idea so much, they extended it into shelf tags. Took uh, a shelf tag and, and the, took our SLB and added a photo cell. Photo cell, just like in the previous act application, charges the battery, the battery powers the tag. And the, and the battery will keep powering it even when the lights go out. <clears throat> In this application, what they did is they need to supply energy to do a quick data dumps. So they're taking advantage of that 20C rating of the part. And because the time interval between these data transmissions is long enough, they also can take advantage of the slow charging capabilities of the SLB. <clears throat> so this allows them to use this uh, in a maintenance-free wireless environment. Now, the SLB makes you know, all kinds of sensors capable of being maintenance-free, uh, taking advantage of energy harvesting. Then, even though the previous examples I showed photo energy is the main source, it can be other. You know, you, if those of you who use microwaves, for example, you can use them. The SLB can be used. So it's got a use in a lot of various types of products. So, and not just in measuring devices, it can be used also in communication, like wireless communication it can be used in. Analog Devices was another company who, look, who uh, looked at our SLB, where they are replacing EDLCs with our SLB to make keep the device maintenance-free and uh, totally and completely uh, independent. In this case, here they uh, replaced AA batteries with the SLB. And so it keeps it maintenance free and <clears throat> retains all their functionalities. Genesis wanted to take advantage of the energy harvesting that the SLB can offer. Now, Rome took advantage of that 20C charging rate, so they can now make a quick charger. For applications. Then here, they actually used a USB port to charge, you know, power a linear charger that powered our SLB, that the SLB then powered various applications. <laughs> As I mentioned, communication. Now, the, the SLB made this device maintenance free and cheap. The SLB gives you a, co a cost of about 6.4 cents a month operation cost. So it keeps the units completely functional and maintains the maintenance free uh, abilities of it. And this next section, I am going to give it back to the other Mark, who will talk about our resources. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Uh, we're going to come up to the, a couple of questions here in a minute. But, sure. Uh, we have, uh, for those of you that are interested and want some other information, there, NicheCon does have a dedicated website that is dedicated to IoT. It has a lot of pieces of information in it, features, 
introduction videos, case studies, as well as some notes that you might find interesting. <clears throat> uh, you can click, scan that QR code and it will take you straight to the website or you can go to the MitchCon homepage and you'll see a section that says SLB. Uh, a note on the NicheCon website, as of today, it's working. We do know that later in the month of January, they will be taking down and putting our website under construction as they reconfigure some things on it. So it may not be available. If you need information, we'll give you contact information in a few moments. But you can also get dimensional drawings. Uh, yeah, and we, yeah. <laughs> Uh, characteristic diagrams, specification tables, data sheets, their circuit design report support, which is kind of some of the stuff that Mark just showed you about uh, some reference designs that we've been working with people on. Um, and then um, we have uh, FAQs and then a contact as well as uh, packaging and safety data information. It does have some videos, and you can see those. There's also a technical notes website, part of it that has, <clears throat> you can download, and that QR code will take you straight to the, uh, um, the technical notes uh, PDFs as well. Uh, the other, here's a video that's just on the website. It's just a quick 30-second blurb. I probably can't hear anything. I don't know. Uh, Mark's audio doesn't work, but we'll um, we'll worry about that later. You can check it out. It's like I say, it's a very fast <coughs> highlight video. We hope to have a better one for APEC. Give me a moment here. Okay. So questions. I saw that Ed posted his contact information <coughs> on the web uh, on the chat and that uh, I have listed here. For the Southeast, Jesus Torres is our regional sales manager. He's actually in the room and been listening, but there's his contact information. And then Mark's information is listed here as well. You don't want to talk to me, so I just took my name off of the list. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, that's it for us on the presentation side. Let me go back to some of the chat questions real quick. Uh, Mark, I think I know the answer to this question, but Mike asked it a lot earlier is, are you familiar with uh, um, massless, uh, yes, can either or both EDLC or the SLB be designed to be massless? And uh, Ed posted a note in the chat which it looks like basically, if I understand it right, the the product becomes, a, and he and Mike came down later, is um, massless means that the battery weight is entirely used for a structural component of the device it powers. So it becomes a part of the structure of it. And the answer to that question, I'm about 110% sure is no. It's not that way yet. Can it be? Yeah. be honest, it's so new that I'm not even sure it's, uh, on our roadmap yet. There are things we're looking at, but Mark? Yeah, well, EDLCs, they have a safety vent. Oh, yeah. And you can't block the safety vent or else the cap could explode. Mm. Yeah. So, no, they can't be used in that sense. Uh, by the same token, the, the uh, SLB is made in the same case style, so it would have, uh, by default, a safety vent in there on the larger side. Um. Okay, thank you. Uh, hopefully, uh, Mike, that answers that, that part of the question. If you want, con reach out to Ed. Uh, Ed did post a, an article about uh, from uh, Chalmers uh, University, I think it was, uh, about massless development, and it's a kind of an interesting article to read. I scanned through it very quick. <clears throat> uh, but if you're interested in what he's talking about, uh, check it out, and I'll send it to Mark as well. Uh, Another question, looking at an SLB from your example, it's the SLB12400L1511CV, 150 milliamp hour C 
seems low compared to lithium ion on other or other rechargeable batteries. How does the density compare? Uh, I don't think I've really measured it because we don't have, we don't do the larger sizes of lithium ion batteries to our agreements with the right. Toshiba. Uh, so in that sense, it would be small, it would be small, but I don't think the density is that much different. Mm -hmm. Uh, we'll have to double check. Yeah. Uh, Charles, if that's important, uh, reach out to us or Ed, and we'll we'll make sure we'll we'll, we'll circle back around to you. Yes. Um, can SLBs be used to handle pulse power demands along with a high capacity battery such as the lithium uh, ionic chloride battery for long life IoT applications? Final. It's final. Oh, final. Thank you. Sorry about that. Sure. Look on. You can look in the chat. Yeah. Um, uh, which, uh, toward the bottom. It's not the last one, but it's. Uh, yeah, I think he's. I think he's thinking for um, maybe meter applications. That's typically where that that lithium thionyl chloride um, chemistry is used. It's very long life, like twenty years. Uh, we haven't done a, I don't think we've done a comparison with uh, lithium thiochloride. Uh, I haven't we seen haven't anything on that, so that would be something we would have to uh, go back to the factory and ask on. Uh, can it handle pulse power? The, uh, SLB? SLB, well, depending on how quick the pulse is. Yeah. Whatever, it, you, you can, uh, 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 but it's usually for like three minutes. Anything shorter than that, you're, you're more in the uh, EDLC range. Okay. All right. So we'll, we'll have to get back to you on that. We'll double check. We'll take, hopefully we'll be able to capture all the questions mm -hmm. and uh, get back to some people on that. But uh, that's all the real questions that I saw. Ed, did I miss anything that we no, didn't think, answer in the chat? I think you, I think you've got, I think you've got everybody. Um, and we'll give everybody just a minute to to unmute if if they wanted to ask a verbal question. Um, otherwise, I will let you know um, this is going to be or it was recorded, and it'll be posted. Uh, we'll be putting that out on LinkedIn and um, uh, sending it out to to everybody that signed up. Uh, please feel free to share it um, and uh, help spread the the word um, and help us connect with other people. In the um, in the community that is could benefit from this information. Thank you. I would like to point out too, as we're waiting for other people chatting, that uh, these products are available with most uh, from most of our NicheCon distributors in, that have them, uh, and I won't list them out, but you can go to our website and find them. But <clears throat> or Ed can if he wants. But we uh, we do have them out there. So, some of the newer series sizes are not available just yet at, in distribution, but they will be soon. And finally, a commercial, if you're going to be at APEC in uh, Houston, Texas in March, come by and see us. We will be presenting. Anyway, any other questions? So you guys were very thorough, so you answered all the questions, I believe. I love that very interactive session style. It's fantastic. We'll leave it open Thank for you. just Thank another minute, but fantastic presentation, Mark and Mark. Um, and thanks for all your help, Ed and the AEM group team. Um, as Ed said, this was recorded. You'll be able to find it online. We'll share it out. Please feel free to share. And if you have any questions, please reach out to Mark or Ed. Um, we hope you stay safe and we'll see you at the next Lunch and Learn. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, y'all. Thank Have everybody. a good one. Bye. Bye-bye.